Hello and welcome to Sport Talks with Sport Profs Office Hours. And we have a very special guest joining the show. TSN Sports Center anchor and reporter Kayla Gray is here. And amidst the March Madness, she's here to join us <laughs> to talk about her craft on air presentation. Kayla, welcome. Thank you so much, everyone, for having me. It's an honor to be here. And thank you for making space for me to, to talk my head off, as if that doesn't happen enough. Yeah, exactly. You figure it's a morning off. But what we want to talk to you a little bit about are these on-air presentation skills, which we have an opportunity to see you know, nightly on TSN Sports Center. Um, maybe part of the, the genesis of how you sort of developed your on-air skills. When did you kind of know you wanted to be on-air? Um, how did that start? Ooh, um, so I tell this story often. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up. So my grandmother would watch the Blue Jays games uh, on mute with the television on. And my grandfather would have um, the Jays games on the radio call. So kind of that mix and fusion for me was just so interesting and so compelling, like just the way you know, the announcers were able to just paint pictures with their words, the storytelling, the way that it got myself, my family um, excited. And I just knew some way, somehow I wanted to be a part of that. Um, fast forward to heading to College of Sports Media. I actually wanted to be an editor because I actually did not think that someone that looked like me could be on the screen at that time. Um, and so production and editing was sort of where I thought I was headed. Um, but one of my teachers was Jim Van Horn who is incredible and amazing. And he was like, girl, why don't you, you always have these things about you wanting to be at the forefront of your stories and you wanting to tell stories. Why don't you try telling the stories on your own? It's fine, try it, you never know. And so I tried it and I loved it. Um, and since then I've just sort of been like, you know what, while I can and while I am here, why don't I front these stories? But I think the eventual goal is to take a step back so that other people can front the stories and kind of like a Lisa Salter's role where like she's sideline NBA one day, but sideline uh, NFL one day, but then she's at the big boys table when it comes to 30 for 30s and productions in that sense. So, um, so yeah, that's sort of how I got into it. And just to further that, so as you sort of discover there's an opportunity for you to share your stories and be in front of the camera. What skills do you feel like you've developed over that time that are just become so essential to you being, you know, able to do your job as well as you do? Oh, um, yeah, I think for me, when you kind of uh, look at the traditional broadcaster, and I put that in air quotes, because I feel like we're slowly moving away from that, some would say that I have just a little bit more personality than what they might be used to. Um, you know, I like to crack jokes and I like to kind of, you know, make references to pop culture, but that's just how I am and how I talk and how my friends and I debate. Um, but I also realize in order to be able to have the privilege to do that, you need to come 100% prepared. Um, and so none of, I think what people get construed is when people have like these personalities and they show up, none of it can really, you can't get away with it unless informed. Um, and so for me, I think what I've learned over the years is just how much preparation needs to go into everything. Um, but then also to stepping out of sort of my bias lens on certain topics and then getting the full balanced story. That's another thing that and skill that I've tried to sort of refine, especially over this last year, um, because it's helpful when it comes to storytelling. It's making sure that you're delivering the full picture. It's making sure um, that you're not missing anything, that you're not linked missing any links for very important relationships that can help further tell those stories. So I think, um, you know, making sure that you're having a full balanced approach when it comes to your storytelling preparation, those are the two biggest skills that I've, that I've figured you have to have over the last couple of years. You know, and what's really interesting too, Kayla, and we've ta I've talked about this with my students in the on-air presentation course, is when you understand the story and you have the necessary context, it has a, a really interesting way of translating to how you then speak about it, how it right. impacts your voice and inflection. Maybe you could just speak a little bit to how you look at deriving meaning from your scripts, from your stories, and how you express that vocally. Yeah, and I think it's two parts, right? It's, it's 
uh, the context that you have, but also I think what we're finding too is lend that context to your audience so that they then can follow with the story that you're telling. Um, and so when it comes to highlight shows, you're not necessarily just seeing highlights anymore. You're also seeing what someone said before the game or after the game on Twitter or what they showed up to the game wearing or um, important family members that might be watching them and attending the game and what's the backstory there. So um, I think to me, yeah, building that context helps make the story itself become way better delivered. Um, but for yourself, when it for myself, when it comes to kind of changing inflection or um, feeling maybe even a more relaxed in front of the camera, is when someone can say like, okay, she really knows exactly what she's talking about. Like she knows this inside out. Um, that comfort, there's certain people you can look at in your industry that have that comfort and that ease. And it's because they, they know 100% uh, what they're talking about. Usually when people don't really have a clue or, or whatnot, the pitch gets a little bit higher, the speech gets a little bit faster. Um, and that's totally fine because we're not all experts on every single thing in this space. But I think what kind of, I try to work towards is if you put me in a space where I might not know as much as say the basketball space, I will work twice as hard to make sure that I'm well informed. Um, and I think once you get to that point, there's a little bit of an ease and, and swagger even or confidence even that comes with your delivery. Yeah, I really like that point about swagger, right? Because, you know, finding your voice is about developing the confidence to be yourself and be able to say it in your way. When when was that breakthrough moment for you? Uh, when my grandma called me and said, girl, what do you, why do you sound like this? <laughs> it was, I think like I had made my debut on Sports Center uh, in 2018 and it was like three shows in and Veronica Marshall calls me and she's like, Kayla, I love you dearly, love what you're doing, proud of you, but you do not talk this way. And it like gave me pause because I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I thought I was delivering all the lines okay. I thought I had my Ron Burgundy all together and I was saying things, you know, the way that I thought the audience would want me to say it. And I had to really like stop and do a deep dive in that in a sense of like, no, you got this job because of you and you shine when you are most authentic, which is when you are you. So why are you hiding sort of part of your biggest strengths, your biggest traits, um, when the lights camera action is on, when the countdown happens for you to be on air. That's when you should be bringing out your best material, which is made when you are fully and authentically you. So I think from that point, when my grandma called me up, I was like, I do not want to get another call from, from my grandmother again um, when I'm getting in trouble that I mean. Um, but from there, I started to consciously started rewriting scripts, scratching things out, making edits and saying like, you know, love the way that this editor might have written this highlight, but I think I would have probably said it this way. And to me, that's helped. That's helped with my delivery. It's become a lot more smoother. I always say like, I'm never gonna, you're never gonna catch me on a sports center top to bottom with the smoothest of read without a trip or a stumble, but that doesn't make me less of a broadcaster. That's just how I am. I trip and I stumble as a human being. And sometimes I say to students is you have to almost have this audacity to be a human being in this industry um, because truly it does make you a lot more relatable. Yeah, I, I love that. And in many cases, it's not whether you trip or stumble, which we all do, it's all in the recovery. In some yeah. cases too, but I love that the audacity to take a chance to put yourself out there and be able to do it authentically and make sure at the same time, of course, that grandmother approves because that that's key. Let's be honest, <laughs> it's, a, it's a juggle. Well, my grandma's not allowed to watch me anymore on television. What would my grandmother think right now? Um, yeah. Let me, let me just ask you about some of the nuances with respect to you know this authenticity because the platform for TSN Sports Center is a little different than let's say your Twitter platform and how you use your voice there. Maybe you could speak a little bit to the nuance and how you find that balance. Yeah, I think um, for me and my tweets is what's what's I always say is I've sort of always been this way. I've always been sort of vocal about certain things that I strongly believe. But I think since this past summer, the audience and the tolerance for what I had to say has definitely changed. Um, and so when it comes to Sports Center, 
what we have to realize is that still at the end of the day is a news show. And so you have to deliver the news, which is kind of tricky in a sense, because you're also required um, in the sport media space to add some flair and add some personality when really we're still just delivering the news. So I think that, you know, with the highlights, with certain news that's breaking in sport, um, it kind of, forces one it forces a personality to kind of just get to the t get to what people need to know they just want the meat and the potatoes don't talk about how the baby got here just show them the baby right so um that sort of kind of helps uh maybe unintentionally eliminate that but i think when it comes to spaces like twitter um like if i do something with the social let's say where it is more opinion based and that's where i sort of become a little bit more different um in terms of what I say, um, or rather how I say. I mean, for me, what I say has never changed. How I say it, the methods in which I say it, probably has sort of had to um, take different appearances depending on the space. But, um, you know, what I realize now, especially with work and at, at TSN, if I have a message or a story that I wanna get out there, um, I can do it in different ways. You can do it in maybe in like a 15 second script in sports. And, but what we're very fortunate to have is a features department. So I can tell stories that way. Um, you know, our radio station as well, that gives rooms for different reporters, um, but also TV personalities to kind of dissect what they're saying. Yeah, really fascinating insight there in terms of, of how you utilize those different platforms to magnify your voice. So. We have a really special part of our show here for you now, Kayla. I'm going to bring in Chelsea Vernhoud, who is the executive producer of Sport Talks with Sport Prof. She has a little something called Rapid Fire, which is interesting because oh. I'm the one who delivers the Rapid Fire, but Chelsea's now stepping in as I'm the host today to deliver the goods for you. So Chelsea, <laughs> please. Hi, Kayla. It's so nice to meet you, Chelsea, executive producer and also uh, founder of this Sport Talks Office Hours segment that we have here for the show. So it's been it's really great to, to, to have you on the show. So thank you for coming. And it's been awesome to listen to your answers on everything so far. Thanks for having me. Sorry, I look a hot mess. Jeez. <laughs> well, that's what rapid fire is all about. We're coming in with hot questions and quick answers, but there's no buzzers. So if you go a little bit over, we will not uh, time you out. So the first question I'm going to throw at you is what uh, was the greatest of all time GOAT mo sports moment you experienced in person prior to the pandemic hitting? Uh, 2019 NBA championship parade. Absolutely, totally agree. I was there as well. Uh, I work for MLSE, so I was completely uh, on board with that one. So now what team will you go see play live first when fans are allowed back in the arenas or stadiums? Uh, oh gosh, that's hard. Guys, I've never been to a Leafs game. I will actually go see a Leafs game live. I'll be at a Raptors game. That's just part of the job. <laughs> Perfect. But, but we'll see it. We'll see you in blue at least once. You just, I won't be in blue, but I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So would you ever compete in the amazing, in the amazing race? Why or why not? I would, because I covered it. Uh, maybe would I? Yeah, I would. It's fun. I covered it uh, in 2019 as well, which was the best experience. Um, just it's grueling, though, what what those uh, competitors have had to go, go through the flights, the hotels, not communicating with family back home. Um, but I would do it for sure. Fantastic. Well, boy, we really look forward to seeing you on it. So we're going to hold <laughs> you to it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> So you post some of your favorite outfits on, that you wear in studio on your Instagram and other social media platforms. I'm wondering, what is the favorite clothing company that you featured on your page? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Favorite clothing company. Ugh, I don't know. So I lived on my own at 15 years old. So Value Village became so near and dear to my heart because that's all I could afford. And still to this day, I go to Value Village. So there's probably some pieces I've posted on my Instagram feed that are thrifted. Perfect. Thrifting is amazing. And I'd love to Thrifting see that more incorporated amazing. in yep. sports. Um, and is there any, I know that you've, you've posted some black owned companies. Are there any ones that you would want to shout out um, uh, that you? That yeah. You I just recently got introduced to Hanifa, I believe it's called. And there's a couple TNL as well, just more recent, like in my, in my closet from a fabulous stylist at TSN. 
Um, and so, yeah, those are fantastic black owned um, companies that I just sort of stumbled upon in the last year, which has been great. Fantastic. So now who is the person you're most inspired of in your life? Mm, my mom, for sure. I mean, she came to Canada at 14 years old and the way that she sort of had to build her way up here um, has been amazing. But I guess I'll do all that with my grandma as well. She came to Canada <laughs> to make a way for my mom to come here. And she was a nanny and raised different families and, you know, made all of their hard work made it possible for me to do what I do, which is great. Fantastic. Always love the moms and the GMAs. Mm -hmm. All right. For my final question, please, in one sentence, sentence explain the feeling of being named one of 2021's top 25 women of influence in Canada okay we'll give it to you in three words so much pressure <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh that's amazing well, well, well deserved and thank you so much thank you so much Chelsea I really appreciate these questions man you're making me think this early on a morning hey, it's, it's all a, a rapid it's fire 11, it's almost 11 30 no <laughs> uh, hey that was that was terrific and we appreciate your candidness and we'll sort of close off the show Kayla here just even even to riff off that you know the pressure so if you have any advice whether it be for for students or people trying to come up and make it how do you deal with all that and how do you push through it and how do you be yourself in the process yeah I think you have to remember your why and I think the why can change from from year to year time to time my why is my son I've always said I never ever wanted to tell him he'd have to work twice as hard um, or be twice as good at something because I remember what that's like and I know a lot of first-gen Canadians can relate um, and while it's well-meaning well-intentioned by your family sometimes you have this complex of like dang will I ever be good enough in this space um, and so for me my why is to sort of create a better space and industry for for BIPOC to kind of just come up and show up as themselves and tell these amazing authentic stories um, you know another thing I would say is over the last little while I've been kind of named an activist. And I think it's very important as we're talking about journalism now to remember that everything that you see um, in the media landscape is a form of activism. So your producer dictating your lineup and telling you, say, hockey is your lead or basketball, your, basketball is your lead or this story is important or this story is not important. That is activism. Um, and, you know, it is partially why journalism is so important. Um, but I think it's important to remember that um, and the bias that can come out of that. So I think when we go back to the basics of defining journalism, um, that might help us get a little bit further ahead for the stories that we're now sharing and telling and having to talk about um, now in particular. Kayla, thank you for sharing that. What a powerful way to end this edition of Office Hours. Um, just want to thank you so much for sharing those insights with us. We just totally appreciated having you today. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys all catch Kia and I tonight. I see, I wouldn't be a good broadcaster if I didn't plug anything in. Make sure you catch yeah. Kia and I tonight um, and this whole weekend for March mad Madness. <laughs> well, I hope, I hope you, you get through all the madness in one piece. Uh, on behalf of Kayla, thanks everyone. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you soon.